Imagine you're in the market to buy a house right now. What kind would you get? An apartment? A townhouse? A condo? A castle? Hmm? But what if you could buy Peach's castle? Yes, the exact same castle from Super Mario 64. How much would it cost? Well, let's see if we can figure that out. First things first, we need to determine how big the castle is. This is easier said than done because we can't perfectly create the scale in real life, but a good frame of reference is Mario himself. Now, of course, Mario's been in a bunch of different games. His height has kind of changed throughout the years, but is generally regarded to be around five foot one inches. So, short king. Oh. So knowing that, I needed to get Peach's castle into some sort of 3D program like Blender to properly measure. To achieve that, I went into the game and dumped every single texture and model from every single room. I put all these into their own folders and sent them off to my friend Cam Tunist, who's a professional 3D modeler. He went through all the rooms in the game and rescaled them to be the exact height Mario would be if he were real. We were able to do this because the models I sent him were 3D screenshots, and those models all had Mario in them. Cam was able to use Mario's foot, ironically, from these screenshots, and recreate every room so they're all the correct size. I should also note that we're not taking into account the castle plexus theory, which theorizes that the castle has hidden rooms inside of it, because I've quite literally seen the entire ins and outs of Peach's castle, and there was nothing to be seen from a physical sense, obviously. So so whether or not there are hidden rooms or whatever, we're not going to be taking that into consideration. But now that that's out of the way, it's time to figure out how many square feet this castle is. This is easier said than done, because there's not only tons of rooms to go through, but a lot of them are shaped really awkwardly. I started off with the main floor of the castle, and just looking at it is confusing. Calculating the square feet is gonna be a massive headache. Most rooms in real life are of course shaped like a rectangle or a square. It's usually pretty easy to figure out the measurement, pull out your ruler, you're done like five seconds. Uh, Peach's first floor of the castle shaped like a heart. Why? The only real way to calculate this was to remove the roof entirely and remove a couple of poles. The only thing I can do now is make a bunch of rectangles and triangles. The numbers listed might look a tiny bit off, but they're close enough that I can get a pretty accurate estimate of the actual square feet. So after making a ton of rectangles, triangles, and one trapezoid, I was able to get my number. Adding all these shapes together gives us 13,441 square feet. This one room is bigger than most people's entire homes, which is insane. And I know that seems like a huge number, but we have to remember that this room has its own floors and staircases inside of it, which makes it feel smaller. Next, I measured out the Bob on Battlefield room, which was much easier to do, thankfully. This came out to be 6,006 ,006 square feet, Cool Cool Mountain's room is 6,192, Womp's Fortress is 6,653, Jolly Roger Bay is 10,208, Peach's Slide is 1,552, and Bowser's hallway thing is 7,160. Next, let's check out the basement, which I can already tell is going to be a pain in the butt to measure thanks to these nice curvy hallways and awkward shapes. Oh, fun! First, we'll start with this hallway and stairs, which was also a little awkward to measure out. After chunking out a bunch of triangles and rectangles, I measured out 6,011 square feet. Then we move on to the basement lobby. Oh god, how am I going to measure this hallway? Thankfully, Mario 64 is a very chunky game, and all the so-called turns in the walls are straight. So I just had to make like, I don't know, 86 triangles, and then make some trapezoids so we could call it a day there. After taking way too long getting all these measurements added up, the basement lobby is 7,374 square feet. Next is the basement's main floor. Again, the shapes were really awkward to work around, but it totaled out to 16,042 square feet. Dire Dire Doc's room is 6,023, Hazy Maze Cave is 7,667, and the water draining room was... Really? Really? This room has a hole in the ground, plus drastic changes in elevation. So I had to take a few different snapshots just to keep track of the measurements. But the room ended up being 12,040 square feet big. The second floor is much smaller, and uh... Ah yes, the famous twirling staircase. How did I measure this? Well, I'll tell you. The only solution 
was to measure every single step and also split them in half to make triangles. There's 24 steps in total, by the way, I had to count them out, so you can imagine how mind-numbing and long this took. It totaled out to being 2,019 square feet, and the lobby was no easier. Look, it's just a big circle with a hole in it. I had to redo my measurements a couple times, but eventually I found a way to carve out as little triangles as possible, and it turns out this room is 18,779 square feet. Then we move on to Snowman's Land, which is 9,294, and Tiny Huge Island is 17,436. Hello? Hey, hey. Uh, hi, if, if you're wondering how big this particular hallway is, it's actually 10,671 square feet. So, a little on the big size. And now for the top floor, with only two rooms. The main lobby, once again, took a super long time to measure, but the total came out to be 24,805 square feet. And the endless staircase was... <laughs> Nah, I'm kidding. The owner of this house won't have to deal with endless stairs. It totals out to 7,692. That means the total square feet for the entirety of Peach's Castle is... Blah, 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 blah. 186,201 square feet. Wow, that's a big castle, oh boy. Except for the fact that I just lied to you because it's actually not that big, and I'll explain how. If you've ever tried to buy or sell a house before, you'll know that unfinished basements do not count as living space. Just looking at what's going on down here, this is not livable at all. There's horrible water damage all over the floor, you got bunnies living down here, and the walls are disgusting. And look, I can't even count Hazy Maze Cave's room, because it has a huge gaping hole that takes you to a dangerous world. So the actual square footage that we can count is 131,044 square feet. For a castle, this isn't very big as they tend to be three to five times larger than this. Prague Castle, as an example, is 753,473 square feet, but that's a bit of an extreme example. A lot of castles tend to range around 200 to 400,000 square feet. But regardless, this is still a ton of space. Before determining the cost, we need to figure out how many rooms and amenities there are. On the first floor, there's five bedrooms, Bob and Battlefield, Cool Cool Mountain, Womp's Fortress, Jolly Roger Bay, and Peach's Slide. You might think that this room looks too small, but technically speaking, it's over 1,000 square feet, and you only need a room to be 70 square feet across the board with a seven foot ceiling to technically qualify as a bedroom. The basement doesn't count at all, but the second floor has two bedrooms, the mirror room and Tiny Huge Island. And finally, the third floor has one bedroom, which is the endless staircase. So that gives us eight bedrooms, all of them big enough to hold multiple people if necessary. As for the bathrooms, uh, zero. That seems to be quite a problem to not have any plumbing whatsoever in this castle. Or is there? Before you ask, yes, I'm well aware of the running theory that Hazy Maze Cave is the castle's septic system, but does that really make sense? There's not even one bathroom in the castle, and what makes this more confusing is there is some sort of plumbing system. The proof is right here, look at the walls on Hazy Maze Cave. So I don't know what to say about that, maybe there are secret rooms somewhere, who knows? But whatever that means, this castle is gonna need a massive rehaul on its plumbing system. And obviously it needs to add actual bathrooms. And that's not the only thing that's missing. Is there any sort of central air? What about heating? Yeah, I don't think so. I've checked like all 30 sides of the castle and I have not found one HVAC. And what about a kitchen? Yeah, I don't see that either, which means one of these rooms needs to not only transform into a kitchen, but you're also gonna need to install a dishwasher, garbage disposal, microwave, oven, refrigerator, and freezer. And those are just the basics with their own complicated processes to get working correctly. There's not even a freaking laundry room. You won't find a washer or dryer in sight. Look, I know I'm not exactly selling this place well, but there are some positives. A lot of the flooring is done. Yeah, most of the floor is tiled and well kept up, and some of it is covered in this nice red carpet. Oh yeah, gotta love the carpet. Great stuff all around. Let's see, there's also, um... No, it's not that, not that, not that. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Let's talk about the big elephant in the room, the paintings themselves. Imagine buying this castle in real life. 
only to fall into another world that's filled with dangerous enemies and then you could just potentially die. Seems like a pretty big liability issue, so the paintings are going to need to be removed. But even that isn't going to solve all the problems, because three completely innocent looking walls also take you to dangerous worlds. So that's just more renovations, like the owner's going to have to cover these walls with some sort of thick stone or metal wall. And I haven't even mentioned the hallway where the ground opens underneath you, and there's a few different holes in the floor that need to be covered up. And don't even get me started on ghosts! Since the dawn of time, people have been claiming that their house is haunted, the neighbor's house is haunted, this one, that one, and this one, but guess what? Peach's castle is literally haunted! There's ghosts behind me! While you can technically destroy the ghost, they always come back. They aren't going anywhere, you just have to live with them and like it. And we haven't even talked about the upkeep. I mean, my god, look at this courtyard. Look how gorgeous it is. That's a lot of things to take care of. You gotta mow this big old lawn. You gotta trim the trees. And this fountain needs to be clean. It is dirty. And then just look at the main exterior. Look at how much grass and trees there are. And we can't forget about this massive waterfall that'll definitely need to be inspected at least once a year to ensure the water doesn't damage the property. But hey, let's look on the bright side. This castle's got some really sweet custom-made windows. That's cool. But the only problem with that is that there's no windows in the actual castle. They're just there. There's one more thing we need to touch on as well, and that's the location. Look around the castle. What do you see? Some grass, sand, water, hills, and then nothing. Ooh, ooh. There is absolutely no way to escape once you get in here. So how do you get in and out? Well, there's one option, and that's by helicopter. Thankfully, there's a flat landing pad that's perfect for a helicopter to land and take off. And yes, I did measure that out too. You only need about 30 feet typically to land, and this area is over twice that length, so we're good. But remember all those home renovations I was talking about? Every single attorney, plumber, electrician, and whoever else we'll need will have no choice but to fly here. First off, have fun finding people in those specific fields that'll be willing to travel by helicopter. And second off, have more fun paying for all of their flights every single time they have to visit. But let's just take a breather for a second. How much would this castle cost if you were to buy it as is? Let's say Peach removed all the paintings because, well, they're hers, and we had the option to buy it up front. Well, the only key items that can't really be removed are Peach's stained glass, the huge mirror, and the aquariums. These three items in particular have a cost that drastically increases the value. To start with the stained glass, it's 639 square feet. Now, stained glass typically costs about $500 per square foot, which means it's worth $317,780. And there's two more of them in the Peach's slide room, with one of them being fake, obviously, but the other two combined in Peach's slide is worth a measly $47,870. As for the mirror, well, there's three huge ones in the snowman's land room. Mirrors per square foot can cost anywhere from $6 to $20 depending on the quality and thickness. But this is Peach's castle we're talking about, so it's gonna be a higher end cost. Let's say that it's an even $20 per square foot, just to simplify things. All three mirrors combined are 2,931 square feet, which brings our cost to $58,620. Imagine spending almost 60 grand for three mirrors, but that's nothing. Now we have to talk about the mother load, the ultimate cost sink out of the entire castle that I guarantee no one has ever considered ever. The Jolly Roger Bay Aquariums, yes, both of them are massive and we need to figure out how big they are. And yes, I say both of them, even though it looks like there's four, but actually if you go into the model itself, they're just like linked together. The wall just blocks it off to make it look like four. It's really just two big ones, okay? Anyway, the surface area for just one of these aquariums is 2,538 square feet, while the total volume is 69,307. This means that it would take 518,454 gallons of water to just fill, and that brings our cost for both aquariums combined to $11,854,633. Yes, you heard that right. This one room is worth almost $12 million, and that's not all. You got fish. So taking all that into consideration, you could probably buy Peach's castle in a range of... 80 million to 100 million dollars. 
So let me explain my reasoning because it was hard to determine a solid number. The biggest challenge with coming up with a cost is that so few castles of that size are sold in the current day. However, some people have actually built their own castles instead of buying a historic one. That cost per square foot ranges from $300 to $650, so I took the castle's livable square feet and multiplied it by 450. As far as we know, this castle is not like hundreds of years old or whatever, and was likely built in the 1980s or 1990s, so its foundation is probably still pretty solid. Anyway, that gave me a total of $59,969,800. And let's not forget that if this castle were real, it would officially become the most well-known castle in the world because everyone knows who Mario is. So that would automatically drive the value up like crazy, but I don't think it would sell for more than 100 million because of how much maintenance and upkeep you'd have to do. Almost every room in the castle would need to be renovated, and that could cost thousands and maybe millions of dollars to do. Just think, that's a lot of helicopter rides, and that's a lot of stone and brick to drill through just to get plumbing working. That kind of work would be incredibly tough and time consuming, so I figured somewhere in the 80 to 100 million dollar range would suffice. And there you have it, that's how much Peach's castle would cost in the year 2024 until inflation balloons it to 2 billion in 5 years. Anyway, smash like if you couldn't afford the castle, I'm gonna leave. Okay, bye.